Check, 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 check it out. It is your best friend, Bart. Your best friend in stocks, options, and dividends. Checking in from the rainy, the rainy farm fields of Valparaiso, Indiana, here on Wednesday, July 12th, 20 and the 23. It is 12 29 p.m. on the Swatch Watch. That's Central Standard Time. And our first order of business, I believe, is going to be the old city. We got a $45 call on Citigroup and City is r- rocking out today. What are they at? They're up two and a half percent to 47.69. So if we don't do something with this before it expires at the end of trading on Friday, then somebody's just going to snatch it right up from me at 45 bucks. Now I'm in this, I'm in this stock for i think yeah 44.87 so hey you'd make 13 cents per share plus though keep in mind plus all the premiums and then the dividend that i have collected so i put this trade on at the end of march or that's when i bought the 100 shares for 4487 dollar bills and then began selling calls rolling calls collecting a dividend So I wanted to look at rolling this again. Can we roll it out another week? Because let's look at City as far as the next dividend. I'd love to try to collect the next dividend. So if we look at the X dividend date, it was the last one posted April 28th with a payout of May 26th. 51 cents, that'd be $51 on my 100 shares. But if we go to dividend history, it should show us, okay, so if they pay a quarterly dividend, which they do, so if we add three months to the April 28th date, they should be paying another dividend soon or having another ex-dividend date soon, To should be towards the end of July. So let's go to dividend history and see what the last couple of years have been, because we know pattern pretty much tells us everything. So if we look at last year, we've got a July 29th X dividend date. 2021 was July 30th and 2020 July 31st. So the last three years tell us that soon before this month is over, we should have another X dividend date. Is that right? Yep, that's correct. So what is today? The 12th, right? July 12th. So can we keep rolling this thing out without having it called away and collect more dollar bills on the premium? So let's take a look at rolling this. Currently at 45, so we'll probably have to stick at the 45. But if we wanted to close it right now, we'd be paying between $278 and $283 in order to close this trade, to buy, to close which would, you know, we're not going to do that because that'll cost us way too much money. I'd rather just let it go than pay to close it because I don't have any emotional attachment whatsoever to Citigroup. So if we look at going out another seven days, so currently this position expires in two days. So if we added another seven to that, that'd be nine days from now, which would expire on July 21st, if we look down at the 45, we would have a 298 to go along with the debit that is at 281. So ooh, that's not a it's not a great number, but if you do the math on that 17, so it's $17 on 45. You and your live math, let's go with it's $17 divided by 4,500 divided by we're adding seven days to the trade and then multiplying by 365. So we'd still be around 20% on our dollar bills as far as a return on this particular trade. So there's no reason not to try to roll this. Let's see what we can get though. Uh, pretty wide on the bid and ask. Let's look at 18, 18 bucks. If we add 18 bucks to our pockets and extend it out another week, which then brings us another week closer to possibly cre- uh, collecting that next dividend. So we got 18 on the board. Uh, 
we'll leave it on the board for now, but let's go with that number 18. So if we were able to collect that $18, let's go to our spreadsheet here on this particular, this on the particulars. So if we add 18 to this premium total, so if we look on March 30th, we sold a call with a 45 strike and collected $43. We rolled that call on April 5th, collected another 56. Then we rolled out and down. So we rolled from 50 or $47 strike down to the 45 that we've been dealing with ever since. And we rolled that out a couple of months. But in doing so, we collected 242 bucks on that trade, which was a nice number. And then on uh, May 26, we collected a $51 dividend. And from there, we've been rolling. So we collected 40, 47, 19, 30, and 18. So it's a total of, carry the one, get out the abacus, click on the equation. The sum, the sum of all the parts is 546 bucks that we have made so far in this position. Okay, so 546. And if we look, we've got our 4487 was our investment, okay? So if we take the 546 and divide it by the 4487 invested, that gives us a return of 12.1%. But if we annualize that, then it gets really fun because it's a 104 day trade, right? So that's what we've been in it so far since March 30th through today is 104 days. So we would take the 12.1%, divide it by 104 days, and then multiply it by the annualized 365, which gives us a 42.7% return annualized. 42.7. We like that, don't we? 42.7% annualized. So the annualized part of our return makes me feel really good. So it's a pretty good trade, even though it would be like, well, what are you doing? You're going to sell off a a stock that's paying over $47 a share now for $45. Well, I'm not selling anything yet. I'm going to try to avoid that and continue rolling, collecting the premiums, but also then trying to collect that next $51 dividend because, you know, share prices go up and down. Bank Shares haven't been doing great this year, but even if it was called away uh, after our next roll, we still have this beautiful 42.7% annualized return on our initial investment of $4,487. So that is where we're going to start this trading day, but I haven't eaten yet today and it's 1237. I was, I'm trying to deflate my currently inflated gut because we've been living so la vida loca and then we have dinner tonight with friends over at the abbey over in valparaiso the abbey so let's take a look at the menu get an idea of what i might be feasting on tonight so i'm going to have some uh, chicken rice and sweet potatoes roasted sweet potatoes chicken chicken, rice, and sweet potatoes for lunch. And then I won't eat again till dinner. So it'll be a two meal day. And I'm going to make some predictions here as well. I'm going to predict that Sparkle Barbie is going to want to start with the stuffed meatballs for the table to share. She'll probably want me to share with her the steakhouse wedge salad with the crisp iceberg wedge, apple wood smoked bacon, gripped tomatoes, scallions, gorgonzola crumbles, and dressing and i'll be happy to do so and then as far as the entrees will be concerned <laughs> she's not going to do meatball gnocchi after doing a meatball appetizer she won't do the burger i don't if she does a steak i believe it would be the filet mignon even though we actually prefer ribeyes better but she gets scared with the bone-in ribeyes <laughs> When you're married for 25 years, you just know, you start to know people. She'll look to me and say, are you getting the lamb chops? And she'll probably be right on her prediction that I'll want the lamb chops. She may go with one of the seafoods, though, as far as she, will she do a grouper? I don't know. We, we eat a lot of salmon anyway, so she probably won't do the salmon here. But I, would, I wouldn't put it past her to go with the scallop risotto. Hmm. In fact, that's going to be my pick to click. 
The scallop risotto is going to be her choice, and I'm going to probably go with the lamb chops. So that alone is making me even hungrier thinking about those meals. <laughs> so that is that. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the little spreadsheet action. I love to do these types of things. This is part of the fun for me on trading for dividends and premiums is to run numbers, you know, get out the abacus with the math, spreadsheet, um, analysis, tracking everything. It's all part of the fun for me. And if you can collect a few dollar bills at the same time, then why, why, why not? Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, and I'll see you, you know when, in the next video.